All right, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're gonna be applying something called RedGuard. It's a waterproofing membrane. You wipe it on, you're painted on. It looks like this. And uh, the purpose of this video specifically will help you to uh, understand how thick you should put this stuff on. Now, obviously it depends on your situation. Are you doing a shower floor or are you doing a wall? How much exposure to water? Do you need it to be a crack preventative or does it need to be waterproof? Um, so hopefully this video can help you out. Uh, the instructions in my particular application for a vertical shower wall call for a trowel application. And I was really afraid that it would go on too thick. One of the big reasons why Red Guard fails is if you put it past a certain mill. A mill is a thousandth of an inch. Uh, and this is a, a wet mill gauge, so you're definitely going to want to pick yourself up one of these. And I'll pop a link down below for this one or a similar one if you're interested. But basically, how thick should you put it on, right? And you don't want it too thin, otherwise it won't potentially... Uh, be waterproof, right? So the instructions call for waterproofing, as I understand it to be about 25 mils as a minimum. Okay, so we're going to actually do a test here. And I'm going to show you with a brush how many strokes it might take or how many coats I should say strokes and coats. Um, it will take to uh, apply red guard. Now, if you're working with hardy board, um, there's been a lot of reviews or a lot of comments saying you should prime it first. And the instructions do call not for hardy backer or hardy hardy backer specifically, but for a primer. And so the instructions say mix it with four parts water to one part uh, red guard. So that's what I'm doing here. In our little test, we're actually going to be applying the primer to one group. Now I'll do in a separate video to see. Does it actually affect the strength and the integrity, the bond um, with tile once you tile this, right? So check that other video out. That'll be coming uh, soon if it's not out already. You can search for that in my channel. Um, but for now, I'm going to apply the primer just as you see here. I'm going to stir it really well and let that go on just one, one coat of primer. And again, I am working with half inch hardy backer as my cement backer board. Okay, and then the other square up there you see I'm not going to prime. That will just be the plain cement backer board. Okay, now obviously we have to tape with our fiber tape the corners and seams. So I'm going to apply a thin layer of thin set to represent what that would actually look like. So we'll be applying our red guard to the thin set too to replicate or to simulate. Um, its application on top of thin set. And I'm going to prime this layer as well. Looks kind of like strawberry milk, doesn't it? So we'll get that on there and we'll go ahead once that's dry and we'll apply our first coat of Red Guard. This is straight up 100% Red Guard. Uh, in other words, it has not been diluted. And we're going to apply that to the thin set and to our primed square and our unprimed square. Now the big question you're going to ask yourself is how many mills is one coat, right? So we'll see, we'll get to that a little later, but uh, basically I'm not really happy with the thickness. One coat did virtually nothing. And uh, watch my technique when I do the brush strokes. You can see some lines when I apply it and I try to knock those lines down so that it's a nice straight coat of pink, right? I'm not trying to glob it on. I'm not trying to get it thick. I just want to see how much, how many coats will it take to get to the minimum mills requirement to, for Red Guard to activate as a waterproofing membrane. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm going over here coat by coat. And it goes on just like paint. So if you're thinking about brush brushing this stuff on, uh, it's going to be very paint-like, almost, I wouldn't say watery, but um, it's definitely not this thick rubber substance that I thought I would kind of be dealing with. It goes on very thinly. Now, a typical credit card might be about 30 mils, depending on the material of the credit card. So that might be a good starting place if you don't have one of those wet gauges. So we're going to apply yet another coat here. You can see uh, it says two coats. That's already on there and I'm applying the third coat. And so I'll try to keep that updated as I apply the coat for you. And we'll let that dry. Now one really thin 
layer or brush lay coat of red guard will not take an hour or an hour and a half to dry at all this will dry in 15 minutes or less it already starts to turn uh, red pretty quickly so keep that in mind as maybe an extra way to gauge you know the instructions say one coat should take one hour or one and a half hours or maybe more to dry well that implies a pretty thick coat in my opinion so here we are approaching five brush coats of red guard and we'll keep the process going we're at six now now computer paper weighs in at about a typical sheet of computer paper about five mils okay so you stack five of them together you're going to get about 25 mils here's how it compares to the credit card i know you can't see that with a great angle let me get another angle here for you so five sheets of computer printer paper 20 weight by the way is going to be about 25 mils now here i am after seven coats and I'm going to peel this off. I just cut a little uh, rectangle with my X-Acto knife. And this is the unprimed side. And you can see how incredibly thin that is still. Not even close to being the thickness of a credit card or five pieces of computer paper, right? Uh, if you don't have a wet, um, a wet film uh, mill gauge, like I said. So this is two sheets of computer paper. And I'm going to press that down and it is completely flush. So that tells me we're about 10 mils. So seven brush strokes or seven coats of red guard thinly applied is gonna be about 10 mils. And we need to get 25 mils as a minimum. So we got a lot of coats to do here. So if you're thinking about brush applying this red guard, you better make it really thick is all I have to say. This is kind of the lesson that I learned um, from from this so you know you're if you'd start knocking it down it's going to get to about one mil or so per coat obviously that's not exact so you want it to be a little thick i mentioned earlier that the instructions do call for a trowel application however at a 45 degree angle that's going to be a really thick layer and i my fear is that this stuff gets on and it dries and i put it on too thick and it starts to crack and fail that's like the worst case scenario so i really appreciate a more conservative approach and i'll kind of tell you kind of what i do here but um, if you've never used a wet mill gauge this is how it works you apply your red guard or whatever membrane you have wet and you kind of stick it in there and wherever it hits you can see there some pink wherever it kind of sticks will tell you how many mils thick you are so you can certainly do that you could apply it with a trowel kind of like let me just get a little corner as an example for you a 45 degree angle holding that trowel is going to be really thick like i said um, it's more like i don't know 30 degrees or 20 degrees or somewhere in there where you're going to start to get kind of a 25 mil you can see i just measured it there and i'll let that dry and i'll point to it with um a little uh, pen indicator, a little arrow right there. So that's about how thick you want your ultimate, or at least I did, um, want my ultimate um, membrane to be. So using a putty knife, you could apply it this way. If you're not comfortable with a trowel, you're gonna have more ridges to knock down. It's not as wide, right? But it kind of goes on like this. And you can see there, you can't see the red beneath. It's actually a sheet almost. And you know that's one, one technique you can certainly use your wet mill gauge to to apply it like like this kind of you can see that a little different than the brush stroke right like it actually looks like a thick layer like this um so here's kind of what i did I, here's my cement backer board it's all primed i did prime end up priming the whole thing um, with diluted red guard four parts water one part red guard and i pretty much brush applied uh the first coat uh, just really well I had a big thick brush and I just you don't have to check for mill depth at this point I kind of knew I was at one mill maybe a little bit more um, but I applied that first coat brushed on for the most part and that allowed me some more control and I'm certainly going to brush on my my tape here or my fiberglass fabric the waterproofing especially for the shower niche that I have because uh, I want control over that I'm not going to use the trowel for that I'm going to liberally, liberally apply that underneath 
and on top, kind of like that. Get that fabric on all of my seams and whatnot. And so the brush was definitely the preferred route to go, and I, I knocked down um, the ridges that were created from the brush strokes. Again, applying it liberally, um, I know that's a subjective term. You, you'll see what I mean in a later shot of liberal brush application, but this is definitely, you don't want to use the trowel for, for something like this. Anyway, this is me applying that. We'll speed it up here for you. I know this video is not how to apply the fabric, but it gives you a sense of kind of that undercoat, how thick you might want to put it underneath and how thick on top. Basically, you want that red guard to saturate your fabric as much as possible. You don't want it, you know, globs underneath there, but that's why I prefer the brush so it's nice and even. And then you can put a nice coat on over top and paint that all in, so to speak, and let that, let that dry really well. So the brush is my preferred tool for the fiberglass fabric, the corners, the seams, the niche, any type of uh, change in plane, so to speak. And you can go a little thicker than a thin layer on that. So that's kind of what it looks like when it's all said and done. I've just used my brush up until this point. Now you could use a roller like this, a little kind of mini, I'll put a link down below for the one that I like. It's a high density foam. Um, but that uh, I learned is, is actually, it goes a really, really nice application. Not a lot of seams. It knocks all those uh, high ridges down um, that the brush might leave, but it's super thin. So if you think you're just gonna do two layers of this and call it good, you're not even close to 25 mils. Okay, so keep that in mind. So this is about two coats in. We're still pretty thin. And going back to the instruct the manufacturer's instructions for application, you could certainly use a trowel. Keep that baby not parallel to your wall, but again, not at a 45 in my opinion. It's too thick. And you can uh, just start to work and knock that down and then test accordingly. Make sure you're not too deep. Now, the red guard will dry on the end of your um, mill gauge. So you're going to have to wipe that down with each pass. Otherwise, it'll dry so quickly, it'll build up that mill gauge and you'll get an inaccurate reading. So this is the trowel application. This is, I would say, all technique. Um, if I were a professional, which I'm definitely not, um, I feel like this is something I could get the hang of. But... Uh, as somebody who hasn't worked much with with red guard i've got a lot of ridges here so it's i'm actually a little uncomfortable with the trowel to be honest i prefer more control and a more conservative approach to make sure i don't get it too thick like i said so this is my preferred route actually just getting a big brush and just applying it globbing it on like this and obviously that's not uh, but there's a little feel to it. You can see as I worked all the way down to the left there, it actually you'll actually feel it kind of start to drag. And I don't want that. That tells me I'm getting too too thin of an application. I want it to stay slippery almost still. You want your brush to kind of glide back and forth. Um, and I like to put down a coat and then go back for a little more like that and then go over that same coat. And that's going to give it a nice thick application in my opinion. It's not too deep or too thick um, but it's definitely higher than a mill right and I can obviously get my gauge out and uh, check that and if you are doing multiple coats you're gonna want to use concepts of addition right um, because your wet mill gauge will only measure what's wet not your coat underneath so keep track of your depths as you apply it and that's about it we'll stop the video there and hopefully this video has helped you kind of gain a little bit more control and understanding of working with red guard and of course be sure to subscribe for more videos like this thanks for being with me